Hello friends, in this video we are going to see a method called Hardy Cross method which is used to calculate the discharge through the pipe. Basically, in pipe networks it is very essential to calculate discharge at various nodes and various locations. So we are going to see what are the different terms related with the discharge and the calculations related with the discharges in the video. In this chapter, we are going to see various terms related with pipe network. So, let us see what is pipe network. As its name indicates, it is a network of two or more pipes which are intermittently connected with each other in which there are some nodes. In the diagram, this junction point is called as node or junction this is pipe 1 this is pipe 2 this is pipe 3 and this is pipe 4 we don't know what is the behavior of discharge what is the direction of discharge so generally we consider the behavior in clockwise manner so this is clockwise direction so first thing that we have to consider is discharge in clockwise direction is positive okay this is the first thing that we have to consider we may call it as assumption second thing the network is the closed one so second thing is closed network hence it is clear that whatever is the water coming into the network is equal to the water coming outside the network so if it it is closed so incoming flow is equal to outgoing flow so this is our second thing which is con consequently happened due to network considerations we will consider various values of discharges say this is q1 q2 q3 q4 to get better idea we will consider values as say 40 liter per second coming into uh, the network so it is clear that if coming water is 40 50 and 10 then obviously the total outgoing water will be sum of all the three that is 50 plus 40 90 90 plus 10 that is equal to 100 okay so this is the condition that i want to explain in the second point that is incoming flow is equal to outgoing flow so these are the values which are assumed by me the basic function of hardy cross method is that making this value such that the actual values of discharges are close to the calculated one and not equal to assumed one so we have considered inflow of 40 liter per second but i don't know whether that 40 is going in pipe 1 only or in pipe 4 only or in both either 20 20 or 10 and 30 so i want to calculate discharge in each pipe so purpose is purpose of hardy cross method is to find q1 q2 q3 and q4 accurately where q1 q2 q3 and q4 are the discharges through the pipes so this is the one of the method in which we can calculate the discharge if we have the proper application of hardy cross method then in that case we can use this method for network related problems pipe network related problems as we all know 
in our day to day life we see underground line pipe network structure which supplies domestic water or industrial water to various places so in that case whether that amount of water is sufficient for a particular point or not is get calculated by using this hardy cross method so this is the importance now let us see some introductory part in introduction first we will see assumptions so our first assumption is that principle of continuity so according to this principle flow in each junction must be equal to outflow second assumption is that in each loop loss of head in clockwise direction is equal to loss of head in anti clockwise direction to understand this we will see the diagram see if we consider flow in one in this direction flow in two in this direction flow in four and three reverse to the given direction that is like this and like this then we will have two types of directions one is clockwise and another one is anti clockwise so whatever is the head loss occurred between clockwise direction that should be equal to the head loss occur in anti clockwise direction so if we consider two points a b another c and d so total head loss occurred in ab plus bc which was clockwise is equal to total head loss between ad and cd which was anti clockwise in direction so the network will be balanced only and only if the sum of total losses between ab and bc are equal to sum of total losses between ad and bc so in nomenclature we will write the directions accordingly so loss in ab plus loss in bc is equal to loss in ad plus loss in dc so these are the direction ad plus dc let us note down the third assumption that is head loss is expressed as head loss due to friction hence we will name it as hf which is equal to r into capital q to the power n where r may be any value n may be any value numerical value 1 to 3 and q is nothing but the discharge so the head loss is the nth power of discharge is proportional to nth power of discharge is the basic assumption if we know if we remember the formula for hf we know that hf we generally take as f l q square upon 12.1 d raised to 5 in previous lecture in which these highlighted terms are called as constant terms which are in hardy cross equation called as r 
these are nothing but the r values and this q square is nothing but the q to the power n where here here n equal to 2 okay and this n equal to 2 is considered for turbulent flows and r equal to fl upon 12.1 d to the power 5 basically the value of r is either given or can be calculated by using this highlighted equation now we will see actually hardy cross method this is the previous network that we have considered this was discharge q equal to say 30 say q equal to 40 and say this is q equal to 30 so total outgoing will be 100 q equal to 100 due to these phenomenons we have value in pipe AB as Q1 in first attempt, Q2 in first attempt, Q3 in first attempt, and Q4 in first assumption. Okay, so we are going to consider the values of Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 logically. I want to clear one thing that there does not exist any criteria so to decide the values of these q1 q2 q3 and q4 we have to assume the values and if they are accurate then we will have the difference between q1 assumed value and q1 accurate value is equal to zero and if it is not then we are going to do trial and error method so by trial and error method we are going to revise the values of these q1 q2 q3 and q4 so that we will go to the accurate values close to the accurate values we will repeat the procedure up to the stage when difference between accurate value and our calculated value is becomes zero so for that purpose we are going to use some summation formula this difference delta q is nothing but the say this q actual is that value that value that i don't know initially and my aim is to reach the value of q actual to reach that value i will consider q assumed any value which is satisfying the loop condition is get assumed and there will be some difference there will be some difference that difference is called as a delta q value so difference between these two values is nothing but the delta q value and delta q value can be calculated by using formula summation of r into q raised to power n whole divided by summation of r into n into mod of q raised to power n minus 1 basically for our case value of n equal to 2 as n equal to 2 so formula can be modified as summation of r into q square whole divided by summation of 2 into r into q where this purpose these formulas are used to reach accurate values so in first iteration we will find some values we will assume some values after calculating delta q values we will have second values of q as 
से q1 one dash is equal to q1 plus or minus delta q. So whether we are calculating according to more values or less value, we'll decide the sign of plus or minus. So we will have another values in second iteration as q1 dash. In third iteration, we will have q1 double dash as q1 dash plus or minus delta q dash. Here, delta q dash will be the revised change in discharges. It is very clear that initially we are having a lot of error. In first iteration, we are having a lot of error. Error means difference between actual and assumed values. So it was not known to us, hence it was very large. But after first iteration, in second iteration, these values of delta q will get reduced. So new value will become delta q dash. This is when the reduced value of delta q. So the stage will be arised such that after second or third or fourth iteration, we will have the value of delta q corresponds to 0. Okay. Generally, in problems, in third iteration, this delta q value is reaches to 0 0.002, 0 0.003. That is, we are able to neglect it. Hence, we consider it as 0. So, we solve the problem up to the stage of delta q becomes 0. Okay. That's all. Thank you.